Today I'm going to respond to a comment. This comment to be exact. You got to stop thinking YouTube is high art. I feel your pretentiousness has held you down here on YouTube. Now, I am not putting this person on blast, even though I think they're wrong, or at least I hope they are. But I think they actually want me to do well on here. And that's not always the case. Sometimes I get comments from people who are on the opposite side, who want to encourage me to be more artistic, but the way it comes across is that they set the lowest possible threshold for selling out so that if I do something that could help my channel in any way, like take something that worked before and do it again, people complain. And you know, it does come across like they specifically don't want me to do well. And uh, I don't get that from this comment, and I appreciate that. Is YouTube high art? Well, I mean, look, my attitude towards YouTube is very different. I've been on here for almost 18 years. YouTube has always been, first and foremost, a means of distribution. I make something and I present it to you. When it comes to algorithms and financial incentives, that's just YouTube running interference between me and you. I make something and it's like they grab it and just run away and they might show it to you or they may not. There's no question that if I made different things, I could do better. I mean, I understand that. I'm not over here wondering why aren't I insanely popular, but I'm stubborn. I make the sort of things I like because I think that makes YouTube better. I think YouTube is better when it's filled with people doing what they like. And it may be the ADHD, I don't know, but I can only do something if I'm really invested in it, if I really care about it. I would have been happy to just organically build an audience of people who like what I do. Of course, the problem is, the problem, the problem is I've done one or two things that are popular. You know, why is that a problem? Well, then people expect everything to be like the popular things. And I never set out to be popular. I set out to be who I am. Now, of course, the prevailing wisdom is that niche is better. If you narrow the focus of your channel, then that will attract people to you. I'm niche in the sense that a small number of people like me, which that's, you know, that's the wrong kind of niche. And when people joke about the film student who shoots in grainy black and white and likes artsy things, I was that student. That was me. And I went to film school expecting more of those people. And I was the only one. So yeah, that's who I am. Like, it's fine. You don't have to like anything. You really, really don't. On the other hand, I think you are conflating artistic with pretentious. Just because you don't like something doesn't mean that people who do are faking it. Because nobody loves slow pacing or metaphor, subtlety, subtext. We're just pretending, right? But the reason I always want to push back against this is I strongly believe that art is for everybody. It's not elitist. It doesn't matter where you're from, what your education is. And I'm talking specifically about art that's a little difficult to get into. When people say it's not for everyone, my attitude is, well, it could be. You may not think you like something. You might even hate it at first until you experience it and then it changes you because art can change you. That's what makes it so scary. And you know, algorithms work against that because algorithms want what is predictable. They want to keep you in your comfort zone entirely for someone else's benefit, not yours. So that's why I think algorithms work against art. And I don't mean in some conspiratorial sense. I just mean if they can't predict how you're going to react to something, then they're not going to show it to you. Whereas art can just come out of nowhere and hit you and then suddenly that becomes the thing that you love. And that's why I'm constantly fighting against YouTube. That's why I'm constantly reposting things like Honey Bloom Dreams. It's not because I think people are gonna love it. I hope people are gonna love it. I've had people tell me that that was their introduction to like experimental films. If my work becomes a jumping off point, you know, to find better stuff, then that's amazing. Because it's not like I was born loving Tarkovsky films. You know, I grew up loving Star Wars and Ninja Turtles, like the rest of my generation. Then I encountered something new and I said, oh, wow, there's a range of things you can express through this medium. And there's so many different emotions you can feel. So it's not just that I'm an old man that's out of touch. I was out of touch when I was in my 20s. What was popular then was just as baffling to me 
as what's popular now. Okay, that probably sounds pretentious, but it's true. And so even if I wanted to be popular, I wouldn't know. So when people tell me that YouTube has changed, well, yeah, it changes according to what is making people money, which changes from one moment to the next. At the end of the day, climate change is ruining the planet. And so the richest people are just trying to make whatever they can while they can. And they have an exit plan and it does not involve us. And that's why nothing works the way it should. And we're all suffering for it. But at the same time, I think a better world is possible. And if a better world is possible, then a better YouTube is certainly possible. And that's why I'm optimistic. That's why I keep making videos, you know, despite everything.